OER Info is back from the second OER World Congress and one of the strong partners of the OER World Congress and of almost every global activity into OER is the Hewlett Foundation, which is somewhat not so much known in Germany. So we asked TJ Bliss if he could come to us and uh, introduce the Hewlett Foundation and maybe we can start not only about the foundation but about your work there because this is a special relationship or a special point in time on this relationship and uh, what is the uh, 101 on Hewlett Foundation? Great. Well, thanks for having me here. So the Hewlett Foundation, I, the full name is the William and Flora Hewlett Foundation, is a private philanthropic organization in California. It's in Menlo Park, California, which is near Stanford. And it started 50 years ago when William Hewlett, who was the founder of Hewlett Packard, uh, started giving his own money away. So his own private wealth. And he started a professional foundation that has grown over the years. When Bill Hewlett died... In 2001, he left all of his wealth to the foundation, which was somewhere in the range of five billion U.S. dollars. And that money has continued to grow in an endowment and is distributed to organizations really throughout the world who are doing work that the Hewlett family cared about. Uh, that includes work on climate change, on global development, on women's rights, on performing arts, and, of course, on education. I worked at the Hewlett Foundation in the area of education with a specific focus on open educational resources. About 17 years ago, there was an opportunity to uh, give a grant to MIT, the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. They wanted to provide all of their content online for free. And they approached the William and Flora Hewlett Foundation and another foundation called the Mellon Foundation and asked for money to do that. And we agreed. In fact, Kathy Casserly, who's at, back at the Hewlett Foundation for a time uh, and here at the Congress, is, uh, was the person who helped make that decision. And so that grant was made. I don't remember the amount. It was a couple million dollars, maybe. And the result of that work... Uh, and the impact that, that the MIT Open Courseware project had led the Hewlett Foundation to realize that this was something that we could get behind in a lot bigger way. And so we gave money to UNESCO to help them move forward on this agenda. And the term open educational resources was coined by UNESCO at a UNESCO meeting. And we heard a little bit about that today. So you can maybe catch that on Twitter and see what people's comments were on that. Uh, but really, the Hewlett Foundation has been involved with this since 2001. In total... We have invested, and we say invest, and it's not the same investment that we expect a monetary return, but an, a return on impact, uh, on helping people. And since 2001, the last estimate that I did, we had invested over $200 million dollars just in open educational resources. It's also worth noting that the Hewlett Foundation has a long history, 50 years of philanthropic giving. That's several billion dollars given in, uh, in grants and charitable contributions. And in looking back on those 50 years... There were four or five key programs that were shown to have huge impact on the world. And OER was one of those programs, which we were proud to hear that we've been part of this, uh, this movement in that way, even from a Hewlett perspective, as well as from a worldwide perspective. You know, being here at the Congress, seeing 12 or 13 ministers of education, hearing from them about the impact that OER can have in their countries, uh, and seeing all these wonderful people working on this uh, has been wonderful. There's a special connection to Germany and actually to, to OER Info, our new website, which was just launched uh, last week. And this is the OER world map. That's correct. Yes, we actually, uh, we realized uh, a few years ago that there wasn't a place you could go to learn about OER from a world perspective. Like, where are things happening? Uh, who's doing them? What, what does OER look like in each country? And so we ran a contest, actually. We don't often do that, but we, we ran a request for proposals where people could submit ideas to, for an OER world map. And then we narrowed it down to three candidates and had them come and present at a big OER meeting that we have every year. And then from those presentations and from additional proposals, we selected one to move forward on the OER world map uh, for the world. And we picked uh, HBZ uh, in, uh, in uh, Cologne. Yeah, yeah, I visited. It was wonderful. And we, we, we chose them to build the OER world map. Uh, I think they're working in connection with uh, other entities in, in Germany on OER. I know they did the German world map of OER as well as a, an example of what could be done at the country level. And that work has been uh, very successful so far. So we've enjoyed supporting that. Not that we support it from a 
German perspective, our, our work is, is uh, not geographically bound. We don't just support things because they're in a particular area. But we ha I've enjoyed working with the, the folks there uh, on this project. And, and to feel the zeal and the energy around OER that's coming out of Germany is quite wonderful. Wunderbar. Thank you for these insights. Now we'll switch uh, because you have a new job. And we do a bonus track for this video. So now we're not speaking on a Hewlett project, but on Wiki Educator. Wiki and Education. Wiki Education. Yeah. And you have a director job there. What yes. exactly is it and what is Wiki Education about? Sure. Well, I should say Wiki Educator is also an important uh, organization working on something that you should look up Wiki Educator as well, but it's not connected to us. Wiki Education, uh, formerly called the Wiki Education Foundation, is an organization that spun out of the Wikimedia Foundation about four years ago. About ten years ago, the Wikimedia Foundation, which is the nonprofit that runs Wikipedia throughout the world, uh, started a project to see how they could connect Wikipedia with academia. So the idea is to get faculty working with their students to edit underdeveloped areas of Wikipedia, areas that don't get as much attention in Wikipedia. The areas that get the most attention are military history and gaming and, and things that, that the people who are involved in that community tend to know about and like. The areas that don't get as much, as much attention are areas related to law, policy, uh, uh, science, particularly uh, science articles that are representative of our population. So there's not much on Wikipedia about women in science or about environmental justice or, or areas like that. And so Wikimedia Foundation uh, started a small project to work on that. And as it grew, they realized that they, that they needed to spin it out to, to grow it even more and focus on specific areas. So the Wiki Education Foundation, now called Wiki Education, um, started to focus on North America. And so I'm there as the director of development and strategy on the leadership team, uh, helping move that mission forward. What's cool about Wiki Education is the impact we're having not only on Wikipedia, mm -hmm. which I'll talk about in a second, but also on the students who are involved in this and get a chance to edit on Wikipedia and have support in doing so so that they're successful. We have a focused on Last year we focused on science and we had a year of science where we had uh, faculty from around North America, Canada and the United States who had their students edit underdeveloped areas of science articles on Wikipedia. And what we saw happen, we had about 15,000 students working on that. They edited several thousand articles and have had their work seen by over a billion people. So as a student, if you can think about doing something in a class that then, that then gets seen by millions, maybe tens of millions of people, uh, is a pretty phenomenal learning experience. The students get an opportunity to improve their information literacy skills. They get a chance to engage with a real community and to do authentic assignments. This is something from the OER perspective that uh, we're very interested in because it's called open pedagogy. It's the idea that you can do something more with your education when the materials you're working with are openly licensed. And Wikipedia is the largest OER in the world. And whether it's in German or English or Arabic, uh, anybody can edit it. It doesn't, mean that it, just, it doesn't mean that you can just go in and be successful. You actually have to do a good job. And so for, from an academic standpoint, from students working on this, it's been a really... A powerful experience for me to see the real impact that OER can have on real people, the students themselves. But then you have the consumers at the end of the line. You have the people who go to Wikipedia to find information. A really important example is the work we've done in medicine. So there are medical schools that are now having medical students in their third or fourth year of their medical education editing on Wikipedia. And Wikipedia is the number one place people go for medical information, which can be life-altering or can impact in a negative way if that information is not accurate. And so the medical community, at least in the United States, is starting to recognize that they have an obligation to make sure that Wikipedia is accurate and up-to-date. And practicing doctors are not the ones likely to do that. But the students who are, who are preparing to practice medicine, who are thinking deeply about it, they are doing that work. So that's an example of real impact that OER is having in the world uh, via the Wikipedia channel. And, and this is the work that we're doing. I'm really excited. It was a work that I was supporting uh, from the Hewlett Foundation and then had an opportunity to go and, and be on the working operational side. Fascinating. Thanks a lot, TJ Bliss, for these insights. And we'll put the links to both uh, the Hewlett Foundation and the Wiki Project beneath the video. Thanks for watching. See you.